Guys, welcome back to the channel. It's about remaining the trucker back with another video. I know you guys saw the thumbnail. Man, I messed up. I don't know if I messed up or it was avoidable. I didn't listen. I shouldn't have did what I did, or else everything would have been fine. And I wouldn't have gotten this service failure. Let's get into the video. I was on a load going to Logan, Utah. And this load delivered Monday at 7 p.m. So on Sunday I was driving and I'm saying to myself, I'm going close to Salt Lake City. If I should continue on I-80 instead of go I-84, I could go to Salt Lake City, shut it down for the day on Sunday, do my reset at the terminal, and then head out to do the delivery the next day. Also, I want to go to the Salt Lake City Terminal so I could get my snow chains, you know, the auto socks, you know, get my stuff for the winter because they're saying whenever you're getting close to a terminal, if you could go there and get your snow chains or your auto socks, please do so. So I was saying to myself, you know what? I'm going to Salt Lake City because this is the closest. I might get to a terminal, you know what I mean? So I said, all right, I'm going to you know, continue on I-80 go to Salt Lake City Terminal. Man, getting to Salt Lake City Terminal, I didn't know because normally, I normally go like 84 and then go to Ogden, Utah and stuff like that. Then I will come down I-15 and get to the terminal and stuff like that. It was my first time going straight on 80 towards Salt Lake City. I didn't know they have that up and down, round and around mountains, you know, and it was at night. So I'm like, yo, I didn't know I it was like this getting close to the terminal in Salt Lake. But anyways, you know, your boy been driving mountains and great um blue, blue hills and stuff like that. So it wasn't any big deal. Anyway, I got to the terminal in Salt Lake City, right? And I remember someone told me when you have a load sometimes you might want to stay away from the terminal or you don't want to go to the terminal with a load because they might find something wrong with the trailer, something wrong with your truck, and it might slow up your, your delivery. You might be late for your delivery. So people normally, when they have a load, if they can avoid the terminal, they avoid it. But me, I would say, you know, everything is fine with my truck. The trailer is good. I have no issues so far. I need to get to the terminal to get my snow chains and everything. But I was thinking in the back of my head, what if... I get held up because of truck issues. But anyways, I was worried about that. My delivery was at Monday at seven. So if there should be any problem with the trailer or my truck, they have time to sort it out. And remember, guys who come in or females who come in with their truck with a load, if the trailer is loaded, your first priority, like your trailer, if there's an issue with your trailer and it's loaded and you're on a load to get it delivered, you know, the, the, the shop, they will take care of you, you know, you'll be priority. So anyways, I wasn't worried. I'm like, if I go to any issues, I can get out of there quick. So I drive to the Salt Lake City Terminal, I pull up there, and the guy said, there's an issue with the trailer, airbags. They have to change the airbag. I'm like, man, here we go, here we go. We got issues already. So I tell him, I say, yo, this is loaded, man, and, and I need to deliver this load at seven. I am an hour away, so tomorrow, if I could get this trailer before, let's say, 4 p.m., that would be good. He said, nah, no worries. Your trailer is loaded. We're going to take care of it first priorities. Just like I was saying earlier, they will take care of it first. So the guy said, we will call you and text you when we change on the airbag. No worries. And this was about midnight, guys, 12 at night. So I said, okay, cool. So, you know, I dropped the trailer. He told me to drop the trailer in the yard anywhere in the yard they will find it i said okay cool so i drop off the trailer in the yard go park up you know go take a shower there i go grab me a, a, a something to eat in the in the um in the terminal because guess what prime give every driver not every driver every driver is different like if you're an ac you get seven thousand points which is seventy dollars so i had seventy dollars on my card and i said to myself i'm going to get something to eat so I go in there, I spend like 12 bucks, you know, buy something to eat after I shower and shut it down. So at five 
in the morning after five hours i get a text on my phone that the trailer is ready i said okay great 5 a.m the trailer is ready so i have all day here today at the salt lake city terminal to go deliver this load no big deal so i'm there chilling i went back to sleep at about 8 a.m i start feeling a little bit hot i'm like yo what's going on my apu stopped working guys i'm like yo why is my apu not working so i shut it down turn it on back it's making a nice like it's want to start but it's not starting so like it's not turning over so my apu is just making some but it's not cranking up i'm like man what's going on i went outside opening up click the switch button off let it stay for a little bit switch it back on go inside turn on the apu again still nothing i'm like yo what the hell is going on so i called the tractor shop i said man I have an issue with my APU. Can you guys check it out? He said, man, we can give you a 2.30 appointment. And remember, my delivery is at 7. So if he's going to give me a 2.30 appointment, okay. If he can get done, um, done with the APU before 4 or 4.30, I'll be good. So I tell him on the phone, I say, all right, man, look, I'm on a load. It delivers at 7. I'm an hour away. If you could finish this APU like 4.30, 5 o'clock, the latest, that would be good and he said yeah you know you sound like you have like a fuel fuel pump issue with the um the apu some fuel stuff i don't remember what it was but one of the guys he came over to my truck and he saw and said yeah some fuel issue fuel pump or fuel filter i don't know what it is but he said at 2 30 we'll call you when you come in the shop and we'll take care of you i said all right cool Someday I'm saying to myself, man, I hope this don't delay me because I'm starting to think again when you have a load. Someone told me this, man. I remember who, like, if you have a load and you go to the terminal, you might get delayed because if there's an issue with the truck, DOT violation, you know, the trailer, they'll have to fix it before sending you back out on the road and you might be late for your delivery. That was still in my head. I thought I got away when the guy called me and texted me at five and said the trailer is ready. So now I thought I was good, but with my APU not working now, I get a 2.30 appointment. I'm like, man, hopefully this get done before 4.30, fuel pump issues. Anyways, at 12 o'clock, I saw the shop calling me and I said, hey, we know your appointment is at 2.30, but if you could pull over to Bay, I think 71 in Salt Lake City, we could pull over the Bay 71. We could, you know, take a look at your truck and, and get you in earlier. I said, oh, word, cool, I'm coming right now. So I went over there, checked my truck in. The guy looked at the issue, said, you know, that's wrong with the APU. Then he said another issue with my truck, like some U-boat got to tighten up a little bit, no big issues. So I said to him, my apartment's at 2.30, you guys get me in early. Can I get out a little bit earlier? He said, yes, as, one, as long as one of those other mechanics finish with their truck, you're the truck that's going to be next. I said, okay, great, perfect. So he said, pull around and go to like Bay 65, park there, one of the mechanics will come and take care of you. So this was about 12.30 at this point. So 12.30, I'm there in the Bay sitting, I'm like, okay, good. I checked in like two hours earlier than my appointment time. Hopefully I can get out of there earlier. So I'm there sitting, one o'clock come around, no mechanic comes over to my truck as yet they're working on other trucks. Then I saw my fleet manager call me and said, hey, why is your truck out of service and in the shop? It's not legal for DOT, you know, whatever she said. I said, well, it's just my APU issues and the guy got to fix um, some U-boat thing. She said, yeah, but they mark your truck out of service. Do you want me to repower this load and give it to someone else? Because they say your truck is out of service. I said, well, the guy told me they could get, you know, me finished real quick. My appointment was at 2.30, I'm here earlier. They said I'll be done. If it's done by 4.30, the latest, I'll be okay. But she said, but your truck is out of service. Um, check with them and see what's going on because I don't understand why your truck is out of service. So I said, okay, I'm gonna call you back. So I go talk to the mechanic guy. I said, man, my fleet manager called me and she said, my truck is out of service. The guy took my truck out of service. I'm on a load. The guy said, nah, that's your standard thing. Your truck is in the shop. It's gonna mark us out of service. You know what I mean? But we'll get you finished in time to go deliver the load. So I said, ah, cool. So I called my fleet manager and tell her, I said, hey, that's just a standard thing, status, 
my truck is out of service because it's in the shop. But they say I'll be done in time to go finish the load. She said, okay, cool, keep me posted. I have someone in the yard right now who I could give that load to, repower it and let them take it and everything will be good. I said, nah, I'll be fine. They'll be done by 4.30. I got in even earlier than my appointment time. No big deal, I'm good. She said, all right, keep me posted. So I'm there at one, you know, 1.30 come around, still no mechanic come over to my truck as yet. I'm there and I'm like, yo, what the hell is going on? Anyways, I go to the, um, to go check out the snow chains because remember I went there to get the snow chains or the auto socks, whichever one. So I was talking to the lady in the store, I said, hey, I need some auto socks for my truck. And she was showing to me, um, showing them to me. She said, I need this amount to be, you know, DOT certified. That way I do not get in trouble. And I'm like, man, they're expensive. She said, yeah, but these you might these are the cheapest you might get it out here at the terminal. I'm like, man, I'm gonna need like three or four bag of those. And when she told her it up, I said, I can put it on my truck, right? She said, yeah, but your fleet manager might have to, you know, confirm that and everything and you can put it on your truck or you could pay up straight out of pocket for it. I said, man, I'm putting this on my truck. This is a lot of money. I don't want to pay for this one time. But anyways, I told her, let me go think about it. I'm going to check out the price of the chains instead because they have the chains. I heard the chains are cheaper than the socks. And then the chains with the chains I heard, they're longer to put on, could be dangerous on the side of the road. Like I was trying to put on chains where you could just spend 10 minutes and put on the sock. But I'm like, you know, let's see what happened with the chain. Let's go check out the prices of the chain. So when I go talk to the guy with the chain, he told me I have to go to the bay, the outbound bay to check out the chains. So I went to that guy, I said, man, I'm trying to get some chains. How does it go? He said, uh, he told me the price of the chain. I'm like, man, this are still a little expensive as well. And he told me, hey, go over to the detail bay. You know, people will turn their truck in. Maybe they will have chains and the guys, they will throw out those chains. So maybe you could get chain like that. I said, that's a great idea. I'm going to check it out. So I look at my clock. It's two o'clock at this point. So I said, let me go check out my truck first and see if they start working on my truck. So I walk over back to day 65. My truck is still sitting there. No mechanic is working on my truck as yet. I said to myself, you know, my appointment was 2.30. They got me early at 12 uh, o'clock. So maybe they're waiting until 2.30 to start working on my truck. So there's an office in there in the tractor bay. I go in there and talk to one of the guys. I think he's a supervisor for all the mechanics. I said, man, look, man, I have a load at seven. No, it's two o'clock. I was hoping to get out of here at 4.30. My APU issue and stuff like that. And the guy said, you know, your truck is next. As soon as the mechanic comes available, they will start working at your on your truck. So right away in my head, I said, yo, I heard that 12, at 12 o'clock when I came here that I'm next, but I guess, these mechanics, they're busy with the trucks they have. They have like five mechanics working, but they were busy guys, to be honest. So I said, all right, I still have time. It's just a little APU issue I have. So as soon as they get to my truck, they will be on it for like an hour, hour and a half, and I should be good. So I said, all right, no big deal. So I said, okay, let me go check out the, over the details um, bay where the guy told me they throw out chains. So I said, let me go walk over there in the meantime and see if there's any chain they throw out that I could get a couple of chains for free. I would still get out of socks, but if I could get a couple of chains for free, let's do that instead. Man, I walk over to the bay. You know, I look on the ground, and I saw a couple of bags of chain on the side. I'm like, okay, cool, there are some bags of chain. I guess they throw these out. I saw on the mechanics, I said, man, I'm here. I tried to use my head also on the guy. I said, man, I'm here to get some chains or some auto socks. But the guy at the bay told me, you know, check if they throw out any chains over by detail and see if I could get any chains. And the guy said, well, these chains, we have no chains at the moment right now. I'm like, man, all right, cool, no big deal. So he said he has no chain at the moment. I said, let me go over back to my truck and chill. So I went over back to my truck in Bay 65 2 30 at this point now it's my appointment time still no mechanic i'm like man i just hope someone could come and work on my EP apu real quick my load is getting close my, my appointment time is getting closer 
I need to get out of here in two hours at 4.30. So anyways, I saw one of the, the supervisor, the mechanic guy, the tractor guy, the supervisor for all the mechanics. I saw him come and talk to one of the younger mechanics. He's a younger dude. He's the youngest one in there. And I saw him was talking to him. But you know me, I can read body language and everything. And I'm like, yo, he's telling him to come work on my truck. That's what's going on. That's what he's doing. And then I see him pointing on my truck and I said, yes. That's what's going on. Because remember, the supervisor guy, I told him that, hey, I need to get out of here by 4.30 because I'm under a load. I would prime your priority if you're under a load and you track the shop or anything. So that guy, he saw that the time was getting closer. So he gets someone to come work on my truck because the other mechanics, they're still working on their trucks. And the supervisor guy, he came over to me and he said, man, as soon as the mechanic finished with one truck, the, the driver for that truck, show him another problem so he start working on it and as soon as he done the driver show him another problem with his truck so he keeps getting delayed to come to you so this young man right here he's gonna work on your apu for you so i said okay cool no big deal so i think this guy just came to work or something like that the young guy was gonna work on my truck so i said all right cool so now at 2:45, they start working on my apu i'm like all right cool as soon as you know, he fix my APU. I'm gonna go grab the snow um the air um the socks, call my fleet manager, see if I could get the other socks and everything and get out of there. Man, three o'clock, three thirty. He's still working on my truck at three thirty. I'm like, yo, in an hour I gotta go. So right away I'm starting to text my fleet manager now. I'm like, hey, um what was that repower looking? Because my APU, the guy pull it apart, parts all over the place. I don't think he will be done in an hour. Can I get this load repowered? No reply. Then I get a reply from the night dispatch. I'm like, wait, my fleet manager is not there? Then I remember I'm all the way in Utah, my fleet manager in Pennsylvania, so the time difference, my fleet manager went home. So now I'm talking with night dispatch. I'm like, oh, snap. So I tell night dispatch, hey man, they're still working on my truck. It's getting close. Can you find a repower? Night dispatch told me, hey, go talk with driver lineup. See if driver lineup can get you someone over there to get the load repower. So I said, okay, cool. I'm gonna go talk to driver lineup. I walk to driver lineup. Driver lineup is on break. He's not back until like four o'clock. 4 p.m. driver lineup will be back. I'm like, man, driver lineup is not here. So I said, okay, cool. I'm gonna come back at four and see if driver lineup could get someone to repower this load because the way it's looking right now, my APU is not gonna be finished in time. So I walk back over to the Bay, Bay 65, where they're working on my APU, parts all over the place still, still not ready as yet. I'm like, man, all right, let me go check out the snow, this, um, the other socks. Let me go to the store and see if I could get the other socks because I cannot get any chains, no free chains available. The prices for the chain, I'd rather get the other socks. So I said, okay, cool. I'm gonna go to the store and get the other socks. And you know, that's what I came for, the other socks. That's why I even went to the terminal in the first place to get my snow stuff. So I went to the, um, the store to get my other socks, talking to her. I said, I'm gonna need to put them on my truck. She said, you have to talk to your fleet manager to put it on it. I said, oh yeah, but my fleet manager went home. Let me talk to Night Dispatch and see if Night Dispatch can do it. I called Night Dispatch. I said, man, I'm trying to get these snow socks, auto socks to put on my tires so when it's snowing. Price a little hefty. I want to put it on my truck. He said, hey, you have to talk to the fleet manager in the morning. I said, look, I'm on a load and I will be leaving the terminal today. I do not know when I will go back to a terminal and I really need these auto socks before I leave. And he said, what about the repower? You talk to driver lineup about the repower. I said, I'm gonna go back to driver lineup right now. If driver lineup do not have anyone to repower me, we'll have to figure out this other socks. Because if driver lineup repowered me, I do not have to get the other socks. I could just stay at Salt Lake City Terminal and wait the next day and my fleet manager come in, she could put the other socks on the truck and I'll be good. So I said, all right, I tell Night Dispatch, I'm going to keep you posted. Let me see if I get a repo first before we even try and figure out this auto sock stuff. So I went back over the driver lineup about 4.15 at this point. Driver lineup said, hey, man, 
It's after 4 p.m. I have no one who could take this load. You would have to take it yourself. I'm like, man, they're working on the APU right now. It's not quite ready as yet. Parts all over the place. And driver line up said, it's just the APU. And then a message came in on my phone, a pre-planned. When I looked at it, it's a load picked up that's going to Springfield in the caves. It's supposed to deliver on Friday, which is tomorrow. Today, Thursday right now. I'm doing this video right now probably release this video on Friday or Thursday night I don't know yet so I saw a load that I'm going to Springfield and I'm like cool driver lineup saw that right away because you know he logged into my truck and everything and driver lineup said hey you just get a load that's going to Springfield I said cool um driver lineup said if they could just put your APU back together the weather right now is not hot or it's not freezing cold you should be okay without the APU right now so if they could just put the APU back together Get you to deliver this load because I have no one. I say, yo, drive a lineup. That's a great idea. Let's do that. So me and drive a lineup, we walk. I think the guy name is Jose. Me and him, we walk through the building. We go over to the mechanic shop, and you know, Jose, the drive a lineup guy. I don't remember the name it was Jose. Maybe, probably was. He was saying to the guy, the mechanic, hey, um, how far away are we from finishing with the APU? And the guy, the mechanic guy, said. I'm, I'm actually think I'm done right now and then the guy said because when I went over there I see him tightening like the last screw and he said go in your truck fire up your APU and see if it's working so I went inside the truck fire up the APU and guess what guys the APU is working proper so I'm like yes the APU fix no big deal so right now it's, it's approaching 430 now I'm like damn if I get out of here 5 o'clock it's an hour away, I'll have an hour spare to drive, you know, an hour cushion. But guess what? I have to go pick up the trailer, hook to the trailer, get to outbound. So that's probably a 30 minute. So I said if I get out of here at 5 o'clock, I would have an hour and a half. So the guy was putting back the APU together. I told driver lineup guy, thank you, man. No big deal. We good. So the driver lineup guy went back to his office. I'm there. My APU is ready. I'm like, okay, I hope this guy hurry up and put it together. So I'm in the truck waiting. You know, this guy took off like the whole side of my truck to get to the fuel tank, all sorts of stuff. You know, the little metal steps that you step on to get in the truck, he took those off. So I have parts all over the place. I'm like, man, hopefully you get these stuff together back on my truck real quick so I could get to the appointment. Man, he was there, you know, putting it back together. I looked at my clock, it's five o'clock at this point. I'm like, damn. No, I only have an hour cushion, really 30 minutes cushion because I have to hook up to the trailer, like I said, and get out of here. I'm like, man, can this guy just hurry up faster? And he's there and he put the truck together. When he finished with the truck together, it was 5.15. And he's like, yo, is there any more issue with the truck? I'm like, hell no. No more issues with the truck. I got to go. And he said, all right, cool. And I said, yo, thank you, man. I really appreciate it. You saved the day. So I backed out of there, man. Go around there. Found my trailer, hook up to my trailer and everything. You know, it's 10 miles per hour in the, in the Salt Lake City Terminal, so you know, I have to be driving the exact 10 miles per hour in there. I'm like, man, I wish it was 100 miles an hour in the yard so I could just fly out of here. So I got to outbound. The guy was there, and you know, I got to outbound, like, man, I think at 5.30 at this point. 15 minutes to hook up to my trailer and everything, do a quick walk around. Got to outbound at 5.30, I'm like, yo, I only have a 30 minute cushion. You know, it's rush hour, hopefully there's no traffic on the road. And it's, you know what I mean? Like, damn, I'm gonna be late for this delivery. This is a huge service failure on me right now. So man, I'm like, yo, I'm in the bay waiting. The guy there dealing with other trucks. I'm like, man, I don't need no fuel. I don't need nothing. My trailer went to the shop. My truck just coming out of the shop. Everything was good with me. Just get me out of there. You know, the mechanic, he was talking to a guy. I'm like, man, I looked at my clock, 5.35, I'm there. At 5.40, I got out of the bay. So I'm driving, I have an hour and 20 minutes to get there. It's an hour away, so I only have a 20 minute cushion. Guys, I'm telling you, I was pushing it to get to Logan, Utah. I'm like, yeah, getting there, getting there, getting there. When I arrived at the receiver, I got there, I think, exactly at 7, right? But when I got to this place in Logan now, 
man. I got there. I saw, you know, receiving office. I went over there. I said, hey, I'm checking in on a load. Then I forgot. I didn't hit arrival on my quad cam. I'm like, man. So I rushed back to my quad cam. It's 7, 12 at this point. I did my arrivals. Went back in the receiving office. She said, um, this is the wrong office. Maybe you have to go on the other side. You see, this place, guys, it's a big place with like three different receiving offices, three different docks and warehouses and everything. I think I went over to UD, um, UDW, but I'm supposed to go to UDD, and they have another spot that's called probably UDC. You guys probably know where I'm talking about if you go to Logan, Utah. Three different play, um, warehouses, but it's the same receiver. And I just happened to went to the wrong one. And she said, no, it's the one across the street. UDD is across the street. I'm delivering to UDD. And I went to UDW. The GPS took me right in front of UDW. So anyways, I go over to UDC. Because she says it's across the street. I just go across the street to that shipping office. It's UDC. The guy took my paperwork. He couldn't find my appointment number, anything. And he was like, yo, I think you should go to UDD. Your paperwork said UDD. I said, this is not UDD. He said, nah, this is UDC. The next building over there is UDD. I said, oh, she said across the street, but I came to the wrong one. I'm like, man, guys, at this point, it was like 7.30. I'm like, yo. So I went over to UDD. I got in there, went into the office and everything. Man, no one in the office. No one, I'm there. I saw a number I called, I said, hey, I have a delivery, I'm supposed to be here at 7, I got here at 7, but I'm all over the place trying to find you guys, I do find you now, and there's no one in the office, she said, just hang in there, someone will come, so I said, okay, cool, I'm there, 7.45 at this point, no one show up as yet in the office, I'm like, yo, this is a huge service failure, because they're going to write 7.45, or 7.40, whatever the time is on that bill. They're not gonna write seven or whatever I hit my arrival. So I'm like, man, so I go outside, I saw this gentleman checking out my seal and my truck. I'm like, why is this guy looking at my, my trailer and my seal? So he came over to me and he said, you're checking in? I said, yeah, and he said, where's your paperwork? I give it to him, he looked at it, go into his car, get a key, open the office door, go inside the office, start doing my paperwork. When he stopped my bill, wrote the time, he wrote 7.45 on the bill. I said, man, I've been here since seven. I'm all over the place trying to find you guys. I'm having a long day. And he said, man, I got the bills at 7.45. That's the time you arrive, but that's cool. No big deal. You have like an hour cushion. You know what I mean? So on their end, it's cool. I have an hour before I considered late. So anyways, we unload, man, everything, man. And I did everything, got another load. I mean, the load that's going to Springfield. And I'm saying to myself, man, if I never went to the terminal, you know, I would have been on time for that load. But I had a bad airbag, so it probably is a good thing I go to the terminal so that airbag could get checked out on the trailer because it could be it could happen on the road. And that's dangerous. So I still didn't regret going to the terminal. Also, my APU decided to stop working and it got fixed. Plus, U bolts were getting loose. And guys tighten it up at the terminal, the mechanic tighten it up. So going to the terminal and I still didn't get the auto socks because my, my fleet manager wasn't there and I didn't get to repo the load so I could stay there and get the auto socks the next morning. So I said to myself, you know what? I'm going to Springfield on my next load. So I said to myself, when I get to Springfield, I will get the chains on the auto socks. I'm going to go straight across I-80. You know what I mean? Wyoming is the only state that I probably get stopped and asked where are my chains, but it's not that time of the year for Wyoming as yet. So I'm like, cool, Nebraska, Missouri, get to Springfield. Then I will get my auto, my, my, my chains or my auto socks on Friday at Springfield. So I didn't get them in Utah and everything was good, man. It was crazy, man. So now I see why people say when they have a load, they're scared to go to the terminal because they might get late to the delivery. And I understand, I experienced it, man. And I, what I went to the terminal for, I didn't get. Which is the change or the auto socks. So, it's one of them days, man. I don't regret going to the terminal. Because they worked on my truck, you know, fixed the, 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 the trailer. I have this trailer for like a week now, guys. Because all I've been doing is live load. 
and live on load with the same trailer. So good thing the airbag bag get fixed. I must say airbag like a Jamaican, but good thing the airbag get fixed. And yeah, we are here. It's about Romain the trucker. Huh? I'll see you guys in the next video. Please like, share, and subscribe. I have to say that on the video. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.